From the director of The Town in Argo and actor in Jiggly and sometimes Batman comes Ben Affleck's newest flick about the king himself, Michael Jordan. It's called Air. I saw it and you should too. Air is a really fascinating movie to me because on paper it sounds so lame. It's a two hour story about how Nike got successful in the basketball shoe line. Like, but it's even more minimal than that. It's about how Nike spent 48 hours trying to convince Michael Jordan to join their basketball shoe line. But it's even more minimal than that. It's about how one man, Sonny, and his small team convinced the boss to sign Michael Jordan to, <laughs> to have a shoe line. Like, this is such a basic concept but man does it work well i dug air every man actor matt damon plays sonny vaccaro this is the guy we're going to be spending time with he's the guy in charge of making the nike basketball organization a profitable one right now nike's doing very well with the shoe line with the running with the walking shoes but basketball's a joke they have very little budget 250,000 is all they allocate for it and they have no prospects in the past, they've been going after the same two to three basketball players to wear their shoes. Well, Sonny knows that if he doesn't knock something crazy out of the park, the whole sector is going under. So he has to do something crazy. He has to do something wild. He has to approach a rookie who hasn't stepped foot on an NBA court and court him to Nike. Michael Jordan has no interest in Nike, though. He's looking at Adidas. He's looking at Converse. Nike is not even in his purview. Well, over the course of a film, we're gonna see how this team of guys, these marketers, these free agents are going to scout and pull Jordan in. This isn't a spoiler. We see Nikes on the shelves. We see the Air Jordans. They are massively successful. But this movie shows just how close Nike was to throwing it all the way and Jordan not being the face of a shoe at all. It's actually really compelling stuff. Now, it's based on a true story. I'm not a person, I'm not a historian, okay? I don't really give a shit about that sort of thing. I just wanna watch an entertaining movie. Ben Affleck does a great job framing things up. I love how the camera has some nice tracking shots throughout. We get to see these buildings in the 80s, in their glory. I mean, it's, it's hilarious. The way people are dressed, the makeup. I will say, one, Actress took me way out of this film whenever she showed up. It's one of the receptionists. Uh, I've never seen her before. She was way too done up, like new age done up. The, the makeup was perfect. The hair follicles were all in place. She looked like in between takes, she was gonna go do a TikTok or some Instagram story or whatever the kids do these days. It, that was the only thing that threw me off. Otherwise, everything else visually was, was fantastic. And music, dear God, this might win a record or two for the most 80s music thrown into a film. Normally that kind of thing is eye rolling, it's distracting, but here Affleck lays it in so effortlessly, so seamlessly. The music plays so well with this almost documentarian style approach Affleck gives with these top down shots of parking lots, close ups of different instruments and, and objects inside of these rooms. It, the, it's so, Interesting how he did this. Even Michael Jordan himself is never on camera. He's always a background extra in a movie about him. I mean, it's not really about him, yet obviously he's a key figure. It's more about his mother, played by Viola Davis. Of course, fantastic as always. And just what a bulldog she was for her son. How she knew how amazing this dude was gonna be one day and how she wanted to get the best for him, the, the absolute best deal any player at that time was given and how it would shape future negotiations. It's a damn good movie. It reminded me of Mad Men in the sense that it goes all in with the business side of things and the marketing. Mad Men disappointed me because there wasn't that much marketing in there. I was always fascinated by that aspect and just the meetings they would go through and how they would convince the people coming in as to what's gonna happen. This movie is all in on that stuff. There isn't all these like side relationships and stories. No, it is very much focused on the ball. It's all about getting MJ to sign. And the fact that 
Chris Tucker's in here and he doesn't take me out of the picture because he's actually playing a character. How Jason Bateman's here and he's doing the same thing. Like all these guys are playing their roles perfectly. Matt Damon and Ben Affleck always effortlessly bounce off each other as well. They're such a good duo. This is one of those movies that it's just hard to find fault with and I don't want to because I was in the theater, I enjoyed my time. Now, before I wrap up, there is another aspect to going to the theaters that some people forget because either they don't go to the movies that much or they just haven't had the experiences I do because I go every week. And that's the theater experience itself. There was nine people in the movie with me. Myself, my buddy DJ Bless. He gave a buffer seat. He likes the buffer seat. I don't do buffer seats. I like to be next to the person that I go to the movies with. Now, I understand Jerry Seinfeld would say, do you sit right next to the person on the couch? Well, no, Jerry, I don't, but I'm not at home. I went out with the person to the movies. I want to be able to lean over once in a while and be like, that was awesome. <clears throat> but he's, he's way down there. We might as well be strangers. Behind him were a couple, a guy and a girl. She was on this side. That's very important for no reason at all. There was another straggler by himself. There was a lady in the way back, Gabby. She came with us. She likes to go in the way back though, in case the movie's not up to her standards, then she'll go on her phone. You know what? I'm anti-phone in the theaters. I hate it. I hate people that are on them. But if you're going to do it, go in the way back. She's doing it right. As long as there's no one else in her row, as long as that brightness is, d is down to the lowest it can be and it's not distracting people that paid good money, to go to this movie, fine, you do you, boo. You're in the back. Okay, while this movie's, go you can leave if you want, by the way. The, the, the review's done, I loved Air, go see it, it's fantastic. If you wanna stick around, please do, and subscribe, because clearly you're, for some reason, into this. These people wouldn't shut the fuck up. They're not just whisper talking, they are full blown just talking during this movie. And I'm not even saying when there's some action and some picked up scenes, which there's no explosions, there's no, Matt Damon's not rolling on the ground with a gun. Okay, he's not John Wick in anyone here. MJ's not dribbling down the lane, throwing balls off other guys, <laughs> catching it and slamming it. No. So these people are talking during quiet scenes, louder scenes. It doesn't matter. I'm losing my fucking mind. I, I just am really trying not to be the guy for once that has to say, shut the hell up. Bless isn't having it. But we're in the South. You piss off the wrong people, they pull a gun on you. So Bless gets up at some point and just walks to the other side of me and now he's over here. He just couldn't do it anymore and I, I, I just kept, I kept meerkatting up to them. Looking like, uh, the guy, the douchebag never even acknowledges me. I'm not even here. It's just these two at home for all they know. For all, it's possible they thought they were at their house. Probably high on something and, and just stumbled into the theater. Uh, when the movie was done, I didn't even get the luxury of like giving him a snake eye, a stink eye, a whatever, a crooked eye. No eyes were given. It would have been really fantastic if I could have been really engrossed, really ensconced in the movie in front of me instead of kind of half in most of the time because these idiots over here were gabbing it up. And she's on her phone too. She's on her phone doing it. And all I'm thinking is, Adam, keep calm. Don't, don't do it. Don't turn around, uh-oh. Don't turn around, uh-oh. Stay focused on the movie. But there's another part of me, the Nike side of me that says, Adam, just do it. The Shia came out. Make your dreams come true. And I said, you're right, Nike Shia. And then I flipped backwards in a slow motion, whoosh, landed behind me in the same aisle as them. I turn and now I conjure up a basketball. I dribble a couple times, go between the legs because I'm showing off at this point and then phew, I fire it. The guy ducks because he's a coward. Phew, he sees the ball go by. He can make out every little detail, every rivet in that b-ball. It goes by. The girlfriend, not so quick on her feet, looks and phew, her head's clear gone. All that's left is confetti. Poof, shh, blood and pus and shit rain down from above. She still got the phone in her hand. She still got the phone with the feed going and her head is all over the ground. The guy looks up, oh, oh, Jessica. And then he's pissed and he points at me and I'm like, okay, 
Okay, who's got next? The ball woof, comes back to me like it's force enabled. I start dribbling again. My, my shoes are making that squeaking sound. And just when he thinks I'm gonna throw it at him, woof, I do a fake out, goes to bless. Who's here, catches it, spins it around like a Harlem Globetrotter, goes around the waist, around the head, he's back and forth, he's going so fast, I don't even see it. He's going so fast that it's like not moving at all, you know, it's like a shutter effect. And then he throws it, goes through the guy's stomach. All that you see is the silhouette of the shadow on the ground, and there's a hole there, quick in the dead style. He falls over like a fucking mummy, and then just blood all over the ground. The ball bounces off the concrete wall, shoots up into the sky like a rocket ship, and so do I. Air Jordan, silhouette shot, grab it, and I'm down for the count. Like these two jackasses. Of course, this was all a fantasy. It was based on a true story. The real story, not quite as salacious. Not quite as exciting. But we always have our dreams. All right, there's my thoughts on air and people talking during the movie. Let me know if you have some of your own. Leave a comment down below. Are you excited for this film? Did you know it was even out? You should get out and see it because it's way better than most of the other crap in the theaters. Like this video if you had a good time. Please subscribe if you haven't. I post tons of movie content each and every week. I'd love to have you stick around. And if you are here and you haven't hit that notification bell, why don't you just go ahead and throw that b-ball right up there, ring that thing so that these show up right in your feed. Otherwise, you won't know what's happening, and that's just a shame. Okay, I'll see you next time.